Please welcome Keith Nugent, Australian National University. Hello. My name is Professor Keith Nugent, Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research and Innovation at the Australian National University in Canberra. The Australian National University is proud to nominate Samsara Echo for the 2022 Falling Walls Venture Science Startup Breakthrough of the Year program. The recycling technology being developed by Samsara represents a significant opportunity to improve the environment by enabling plastics to be recycled infinitely without loss of quality. Unlike current recycling technologies, the process is economical with a low carbon footprint. The overall goal of Samsara and its potential for positive impact is one that ANU is proud to support. In addition, Samsara represents the power of intensive collaboration between basic research, industry partners and venture investment through its partners ANU, Woolworths, a major Australian supermarket chain, and Main Sequence Ventures, a major Australian venture capitalist. On behalf of the Australian National University, I wish the team the best of luck in its important endeavours. Breaking the wall to infinite plastic recycling. Vanessa Vongsuthi, Samsara Eco. The world produces 400 million tonnes of plastic from fossil fuels every year. And all of that plastic is accumulating in forms such as post-consumer packaging, discarded textiles and construction waste. Only 9% of the time does this plastic bottle make it to a mechanical recycling facility. There, if the waste stream is pure enough, it gets melted and reformed into recycled plastic. But with each cycle of this process, the plastic loses some of its quality and structural integrity. And after about five cycles, it meets the same fate as the rest of our plastic waste. In the face of a polluted planet, governments have introduced new legislations and the world's largest plastic producers have made global commitments towards reducing virgin plastic production. But existing recycling technology will not allow us to meet the incoming demand for high quality recycled plastic and it will not allow us to clean up the planet. To resolve this, recycling must be tolerant to contaminations and dyes, able to handle mixed plastics and textiles, and importantly, we must be able to recycle any given plastic over and over again. It must be infinite. At Samsara Eco, we're achieving this by engineering plastic-degrading enzymes, like the molecules shown here, that can rapidly break down plastics all the way to the most basic chemical building blocks that they're made of. Here's how it works. We take your biscuit trays, fast fashion clothing items, and colored bottles, and using our patented enzymatic process, we convert them into their constituent chemicals known as monomers. These monomers can then be used to make virgin quality plastic again, with no compromise to the quality of the plastic over an infinite number of cycles. We can even upcycle these monomers into more valuable commodity chemicals. Our process provides technological advantage at each step from plastic to monomer. Firstly, we can take the feedstock that other recyclers don't want. As our process can tolerate contaminants, dyes, mixed plastics and textiles, we divert our feedstock from landfill, reducing the costs of our inputs. Secondly, unlike existing enzymatic recycling technology that works in batches and consumes the enzyme with each cycle, our process is continuous and reuses the enzyme over multiple cycles, reducing conversion costs and improving efficiency. Thirdly, our enzymes work in mild conditions and our process has no energy-intensive pre-processing steps minimizing our carbon footprint to less than half that of virgin plastic production. Importantly, our product is equivalent to virgin plastic, providing us with a high offtake revenue. As we stand with a handful of enzymes that target two of the most commonly used plastics, PET and nylon, the total addressable market is an estimated 235 billion US dollars. However, we're expanding our platform technology to break down almost any plastic and are developing our upcycling program to rapidly diversify into other markets. In the last 12 months, we've raced towards unlocking our goal of making plastic infinitely recyclable at scale. Our technology is proven at a lab and pilot plant scale, and we are currently performing trials with the largest consumer goods companies in the textiles and packaging industries. In parallel, we've raised $54 million in our Series A, 
from the world's leading investors to build our first commercial facility in Australia. This facility will have a 20,000 tonne capacity and serve as a blueprint for future facilities with the capacity to recycle hundreds of thousands of tonnes of plastic per year. Leveraging our partnerships with the Australian National University, Main Sequence Ventures and Woolworths, Australia's largest supermarket retailer, our talented team of scientists, engineers and business people are bringing infinite plastic recycling to the world. We are looking for feedstock and offtake partners and investors to accelerate Samsara towards our 2030 ambition of recycling 1.5 million tonnes of plastic per year. <coughs> All the plastic we'll ever need has already been produced. With infinite plastic recycling, we can view waste as a valuable resource and put a full stop to the production of virgin plastic from fossil fuels. Thank you, Vanessa. Fantastic. I would invest immediately, I mean, only just for the title, infinite plastic recycling. This is great. So, the question, we have a lot of questions, okay. Uh, first, Martin, please. Um, same question again. I mean, great stuff, but there, there are many competitors outside. So why is your solution the best? Why are your enzymes the best? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, first of all, if we, if we look at conventional recycling techniques, we have, uh, tech, uh, we have mechanical recycling, pyrolysis, and incineration. Pyrolysis and incineration really just give plastic another lifetime as fuel or energy, and eventually this just releases the carbon that was once trapped in plastic into the atmosphere. So it doesn't really offer us a true solution to circularizing the plastic economy. Um, other advanced recycling technologies that are aiming for circularity include uh, batch-type enzymatic processes and chemical recycling. Um, our life cycle assessment completed by a third party demonstrates that our enzymatic recycling process is the only of these other technologies that has a lower carbon footprint than virgin plastic production. So while some of these other technologies are depolymerizing plastic, they do so in high pressure, high temperature conditions, uh, often uh, not reusing the enzyme over multiple cycles as we do. Um, and so for this reason, we think that our technology provides a much more uh, attractive economics and better efficiency. Mm -hmm. We have Christopher, and then we will take Geneviève. Hello. Um, actually, I was wondering about your enzyme production technology and how are you able to, what technology are you using and how are you able to produce the enough enzymes for these uh, scaled up processes? Because it Just seems like a lot of enzyme that you might need. Yeah, just one question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a really great question. So, I mean, the, the way we will produce the enzyme is stock standard fermentation techniques. Um, the fact that we can reuse the enzyme over multiple cycles uh, means that we will not be building a fermentation facility alongside a recycling facility. Um, what happens in batch type processes is you have to replenish the enzyme in your recycling cycle uh, every single batch that you do. And because we circumvent that, we, uh, our modelling estimates that we reduce the cost of the enzyme from an estimated $700 per tonne of recycled plastic down to as little as $2 per tonne. So uh, the resources put into enzyme production are nowhere near as high as some of the competing technologies. Mm -hmm. Next question with Geneviève, please. How can you use uh, plastic? And sometimes they're mixed with other materials. So how can you discard and do you need to have clean material only? Yeah, that's also a really great question. So the reason that our process can deal with mis mixed plastics, contaminants and dyes really comes down to the fact that it works on a molecular level and our enzymes are highly specific. Um, and so unlike mechanical recycling where you have to separate the bottle cap from the bottle itself before you do this melting and reforming process, uh, we can actually just selectively depolymerize the bottle or the polyester component of a t-shirt. And then what's left behind can be isolated to be recycled in parallel processes. Next question, we would have a time for a last question. Yes, here. Very fast, please, and also very fast answer. Um, actually, it was a link to the question that's being asked. It's about the purity at the end. You showed a very beautiful white monomer, and you only got 
dialic acid, you've got ethylene glycol, you've got a mix of different monomers. How do you separate that at the end? Because I can imagine that being quite selective and quite cost intensive. Yeah, I guess the, so the, the purification of the monomers at the end is actually, luckily for us, um, standard techniques and equipment and that has already been used in the chemical manufacturing industry. And so for that reason, we are able to produce virgin quality monomers and purify using existing technology. Perfect timing. Thank you very Thank much, you. Vanessa. I will uh, now welcome the next one on stage.